Today on Songs of Praise, I'm in Norfolk to meet with one of the world's most successful composers, Andrew Lloyd Webber, to discover why he's so passionate about getting more churches connected to the internet. If you've got Wi-Fi in the church, it is blindingly obvious that the churches should become once again the centre of their communities. The Father up in heaven, all he wants to do is bless you, all he wants to We meet a rapper who's using his music to put across his message of faith to prisoners. And as we prepare for the launch of our School Choir of the Year competition, I'm in Coventry to learn how one former winner is proving a big hit in the world of classical music. With the princess of his people. And of course, there's some wonderful singing to join in with from around the UK. So let's head to Coventry for our first hymn. Now thank we all our God. These days, surfing the internet for our favourite website is something that many of us take for granted. But for millions in rural parts of the country, getting connected can be a major problem. Still, here in Aylsham, near Norwich, the church is at the heart of a pioneering scheme to provide isolated rural churches with internet access for the very first time. In the heart of the town, St Michael's has been serving its congregation for around 800 years. And just as in medieval times, today the nave of the church is being used for trading. But big changes are in the air. We've got the email, look, this is the email from That's Harry. That's from Harry, yeah. Sylvia and David are part of a growing band of parishioners who are taking full advantage of the church's new internet connection. This is the 21st century and we have to be up with the times. Wi-Fi is the way of the world at the moment, so the church has to buy into that and use it to the best purpose to bring people into the church. Now the man behind some of the world's most successful musicals and my former mentor, Lord Lloyd Webber, wants every church to be fitted with Wi-Fi. 
Why do you feel so passionately about heading up this campaign? Well, I'm a great lover of architecture, and I started something called the Open Churches Trust, which was intended to keep churches such as this open. And the real way to keep a church open is to use it. And it is a fantastic thought that what you do is you have Wi-Fi. It encourages people, on the one hand, to come and have a look at the church. You could come to the place because you want to work or you want to have a cup of coffee. And it keeps the building open and alive. And it, it is blindingly obvious that the churches should become, once again, the centre of their communities. St Michael's has been connected to the internet for the past four months and the Wi-Fi is proving a big benefit to churchgoers of all ages. So I hope you've enjoyed visiting the church today. Social isolation is a major problem in rural communities and in many villages around this area the shops have closed and the church is the last thing that's left and if we're able to provide the internet access it puts us right back in the centre of communities and creates um, churches as community hubs. You get a church like this where it's quite clear that they want to use every possible modern facility to be able to make people come. And that's it. It doesn't matter if, if you're not religious. The most important thing is, is that these marvellous buildings are being used. As one of the tallest buildings in the area, St Michael's is at the heart of a network which is helping to get other rural churches connected to the internet. At the top of the church, there's a, a, a mast and it's beaming a signal out between five and six kilometres from, from this church. And then that's picked up from the other churches that are part of the network. Later in the programme, Andrew Lloyd Webber reveals the inspiration for some of his best known musicals based on stories drawn from the Bible. Again, our Father, our Father, all of heaven rules your name, sing louder, let this place be what's request. Come down. Heaven, come Just one more time, let's be clear together. 
It's just a couple of weeks away from one of the highlights of the Songs of Praise calendar, our annual School Choir of the Year competition. While the competition is all about singing together in harmony, it's also been a springboard for talented soloists who've gone on to sing professionally. David's been to Coventry to meet with former school choir member Matthew Sandy, whose solo stole the show back in 2008. Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder I, I remember that moment, the suspense, and, and Ali said, The Songs of Praise Senior School Choir for 2008 is... Blue Coat School, and just the eruption from the whole choir. It gave us a sense that if you work hard, and if you put in the effort, then you will go on to achieve. So where did the music take you after school? Well, immediately it took me to Cambridge and I had a choral scholarship at King's College. And since then it's taken me all over the world with all sorts of orchestras. What's the biggest audience you've played to so far? Your those Christmas services, you're in the chapel with a packed out chapel, but you're also conscious that millions and millions of people the world over will be listening to that carol service. But I think that one of the more terrifying ones was, was the Pope's Mass in Birmingham, where I went up to the lectern and there were thousands and thousands of people all the way up the crest of this hill. 